I was born in Arhanga, Tsitsilik, Mongolia, and it's uh, a countryside centered in Mongolia. And my mom lived in the city, capital city, because uh, she is a violinist and had a job to do. So I grew up mostly with my grandma. And we lived in a yurt when we were in the countryside. Grandma is a doctor, so she got a job in the city where we had to move. As a kid, I think I was very quiet and kept it to myself. Um, but whenever I'm with my family, grandma and mom, I, would, I always like to dance and sing for them. My mom, because she was a violinist, she wanted me to play some kind of instrument. And my mom said, you know, there is an instrument called cello and you have to sit and play that instrument if you want to play it. I just said, okay, there is only one music school in Mongolia. So I went in and I remember the teacher was very interested because she was like, wow, your fingers are very long. You've got a lot of potential. You wake up in the morning before class and go out when it's freezing, minus 40 Celsius. You do your basic education classes all day from 9 to 1.30 and then I would have orchestra and have my private lesson. Then the only time I could practice is during dinner time. And then I would do my homework up until 2 a.m. and then keep going, it's like a loop. Every day she would give me lunch money and I would use that money to watch YouTube uh, of amazing players. I started to like open up this like treasure chest of cellists and I was so inspired. Then I always had this kind of dream that I would play somewhere else than Mongolia and be a soloist. My last year of high school, our teacher said, look, we had a contact from a violinist Midori. She's got this program called Music Sharing where she goes to developing countries with string quartet. We played for four of them. So Peter is the cellist and asked me, you know, where do you see yourself? And I said, well, I want to, you know, pursue my studies in Russia or Germany. And he said, oh, have you considered about the United States? I was like, that's impossible. Next day, he came up to me and he said, look, so I called my mom and dad and I asked them if you could come and live with them and study with my old teacher. And they said yes. And I just could not believe what he was saying. Eventually, his mom started to get in touch with me about what we could do to get me to the States. Now that what I've been looking for, it's starting. I got here in 2010. I only had one suitcase and I got so emotional because I just thought I'm leaving my family behind. My mom and grandma, I was crying the entire way. I felt like I was being a completely different human being as a musician, as a person. For my American family, I call them mom and dad now because I've been with them for 10 years. I got into SMU, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. One of the things about doing performance diploma is that you have to give a lot of recitals. However, I was starting to kind of struggle with myself a little bit. I was in a very competitive place now than ever. So I would get very nervous whenever I had to perform. I think I started to compare myself to other students. So if the cello didn't go well, I would punish myself by not eating. I didn't know I was in it until it became a lot worse. You kind of focus on the negative and then you find a way to feed it it's going to become worse. So I, it, it got to the bottom where I couldn't even 
get up on my feet. As a young Mongolian girl, I wanted to be a soloist, but that dream faded quickly without me knowing it. I successfully graduated from my master's degree, and right after that I took my first audition, which was Illinois Symphony. So I got that job, and it's been wonderful to play with Illinois Symphony. Making music with somebody else, and with, with somebody else's voice, that really makes me happy. And also making more friends, because it's not just about me just showing up and playing in an orchestra. I make friends too, and that means a lot to me. I used to, whenever if I play out of tune or make a mistake, oh, the entire piece is now shattered. What's the point, right? And then I will just give up. Who cares? I am only human. Now when I make a little tiny mistake, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Keep playing. That's not the end of the world. Actually, it makes it fun to have a mistake. It just shows I'm not perfect.